These videos are strictly only for entertainment and educational purposes. I do not encourage or endorse to any of the behaviors of the people I am talking about in my videos. Shortly after 8 a.m. on Friday, June 4, 2010, second grader Kyron Horman arrived at Portland's Skyline Elementary School. It was the day of the science fair, and he was setting up his project with the help of his stepmother. Though a fellow student reported seeing him at 9 a.m. near the school's south entrance, Chiron did not report to any classes that day, nor did he board the bus later to come home. In fact, he has never been seen by anyone since. Ironically, Chiron had a quite big interest in forensic science. On the day he disappeared, he was wearing a CSI t-shirt, bearing the logo from the crime procedural show. It was Horman's stepmother, Terry Moulton, who was the last family member to see the boy alive as he walked down the school's hallway to a class that Friday morning. But she failed a polygraph test on the day's events twice and has since then divorced Horman's father and has been named a suspect by court documents and her own lawyers. Perhaps the most authoritative sequence of events on Horman's last day comes from a detailed timeline courtesy of the Oregonian, which actually put Moulton at two different grocery stores until 10.10 that morning. However, between then and 11.39 a.m., the stepmother has no alibi. She claims she was driving rural roads with her infant daughter Kiara, trying to soothe her ear infection before checking into a 24-hour fitness about 11 miles away at 11.39 a.m., where she stayed for an hour. Then, at 1.21 p.m., Moulton claimed to have arrived home, logged into Facebook, and posted photos of Horman at school with his science project from that morning. Then Kyron Horman's father Kane joined Moulton to meet the school bus at 3.30 p.m. But Horman did not get off. When they drove to the school and found out that Horman had been marked absent all day, they had the secretary call 911. And so began the largest missing person search in Oregon history to date began. At the heart of the search for Kyron Horman is the relationship between his parents and stepmother. His biological parents, Kaney Horman and Desiree Young, divorced when the boy was young, and the two shared custody until Desiree became severely ill with kidney problems. She was forced to move back in with her parents and give full-time custody of Horman to Kane until she fully recovered. Kaney then married Terry Moulton, with whom he had a daughter, Kiara. But things were apparently not going well in the marriage, according to emails that Moulton sent to her friends. After police showed her these messages, Young said the emails revealed that Moulton had a severe hatred for Kyron. She blames a lot of the marital problems between Kane and herself on Kyron. It was a huge point of contention in their marriage, and she had expressed in great detail her hatred for Kyron, Young said. I now believe without a shadow of a doubt that not only is she capable of hurting Kiron, that it's clear that she could have hurt him in the worst possible way. Initially, there was no real interest in Moulton as a suspect in Kyron Horman's disappearance. Sources indicated that there was a probability of deception during her first polygraph, and gaps in the timeline she gave for the day Horman vanished. Yet none of these details amounted to anything more than suspicion, until about a month into the investigation when a bombshell was dropped. For ten days, Horman's case was considered a missing persons one, but then investigators announced it was officially a criminal investigation. In July 2010, a local landscaper who Moulton previously hired showed up at the police station, and he told authorities that about six months prior to Horman's disappearance, Moulton Horman offered him money to kill her husband. Detectives shared the landscaper's account with Kane, and he left the house on June 26 with the couple's 19-month-old daughter. He promptly hired a family law attorney and filed divorce papers and a restraining order against Moulton. Unfortunately, police have no other suspects, and there are little to no updates on the Kyron Horman case today. They found no clues. They found nothing, Horman's father told KPIC News in 2015. All the searches to date that I know of, both private and by the sheriff's office or the search and rescue teams, there's been no piece of evidence forensically linked to our case. So they found nothing. So he's not around here. So the question is, where is he? To this day, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Department is still actively seeking any 
and all leads in the case. But without a breakthrough, the authorities are still no closer to solving Kyron Horman's disappearance after more than a decade. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and also subscribe for more. See you next time. Bye.